Welcome in to another special edition of What's Right with Nick Wright, the podcast and YouTube shows. We are into the top five of the 50 greatest players of the last 50 years. And this is the part of the list where I'll be honest, I'm really glad that it is the last 50 years because Wilt and Russell and how they slot up against the next two guys incredibly difficult for me. And I, I I know we're not doing Wilt and Russell on this pod, but the top three are not only the top three of the last 50 years. In my opinion, they are the top three of all time. But five and four, how they would compare and contrast to Wilt and Russell, incredibly difficult to evaluate. And so I'm glad we don't have to evaluate. Also, number five is a player who I've wa- I watched in real time the entirety of his career. Number four is a player who I have very, very few memories of, very few of his real apex and of, honestly, the majority of his playing career. And I had to go back and watch and research. And thanks to the internet, you can really go back and watch almost any playoff game if you're willing to pay pay for it and any playoff game certainly of the last 40 years and most of the last 50 years but they're two very different players they are very similar in this number five and four are both guys who have a handful of jewelry as everyone does on the rest of this list they are both unique in that we had never quite had a player dominate from day one the way both of these guys did from day one from rookies being mvp caliber guys Not even, well, I don't want to give away the rest of the list, but guys who are in the GOAT conversation did not dominate as rookies as much as number five and number four did. But let's get right to it. Number five on our list, the fifth greatest player of the last 50 years, the big fundamental. Number five, Tim Duncan. So let's go over the career resume before we get to the the playoff stuff. The career resume is quite simple. Ten times first team All-NBA, that's tied for the fourth most ever. Three times second team, two times third team All-NBA, that is 15 total All-NBA teams, that is tied for the second most ever. He's a two-time league MVP, and years one through eight of his career, first eight seasons of his career, he was top five MVP finisher, nine total MVP top five finishes. He's a 15-time all-defensive player. That is the most in NBA history by a wide margin. He was 21-12-3 as a rookie. And in fact, he was 21-12-3 for averages over his first 12 seasons, which speaks to the consistency. His rookie year, he was 21-12-3. And the first 12 years of his career combined, he was 21 points, 12 rebounds, 3 assists, with all-world caliber defense every step of the way. He is fifth all-time in blocks. He is sixth all-time in rebounds. He is 15th all-time in points. That's all in the regular season. Now to the playoffs. The top line of the playoffs are this. He is a five-time champion and a three-time finals MVP with one additional finals appearance. That one, one of the most famous finals ever, the 2013 finals against LeBron in the Miami Heat. His career playoff average, 20 points, 10 rebounds. From 99 to 07, his nine-year playoff prime. In those nine years, he won four rings, he won three finals MVPs, and he averaged 24 points, 14, 13 rebounds, four assists, three blocks per game, in 40 minutes per game, on 50% shooting. So that's the general Tim Duncan stuff. But as we do with everyone on this list, we then go year by year to their playoff career. Oh, and by the way, I should mention this. Playoffs every single season, 50 or more wins every single year of his career, except for the year that there was only 50 games. The 66-game season, he won 50 games. The only year he didn't win 50 games was the year there was only 50 games. And that, by the way, is one of the main reasons I have Duncan 5 and Kobe 6. Is Kobe had 
that little golf in the middle of his career post Shaq pre pow Duncan never had that. 50 wins in the playoffs every year of his career. All right, so let's go to his rookie year. 1998, his first career playoff game, 32-10. and 10. Opens round two against Carl Malone with 33-10, and 10, but they lose in round two. But as a rookie, is dropping 30 and 10s in the postseason. 1999, facing Shaq in round two. Averages for the series, 29 and 11, and sweeps Shaquille O'Neal out of the playoffs. Kobe was on that team too, but Kobe's too young to take any flack for that. He had 37 and 14 to go up 3 0 on, Sha- and Sha- on Shaq, and 33 and 14 to finish off the sweep. By the way, Shaq, who over the next three years after that in the finals would average 36 points per game, he held Shaq to 24 points per game. In his first career finals game ever against the Knicks in 99, 33 and 16. For the series, averaged 27 and 14, finals MVP. And that season, the Spurs went 15 and 2 in the playoffs. It gets forgotten because his lockout year, first year without Jordan, that team kicked everybody's ass. 15 and 2 for the playoffs. The next year, he was injured. So the Spurs made the playoffs, but he got injured at the end of the season, meniscus thing. They held him out so he didn't get to defend his title. 2001 against Dirk in round two, averages 27 and 17. In the 01 Western Conference Finals against the defending champion Lakers in game two, he had 40 and 15, but that Lakers team was on the short list of maybe best Lakers team ever. They then sweep San Antonio. San Antonio swept him in 99. The Lakers sweep him back in 2001. 2002, against the Lakers in round two, he's absolutely unbelievable. But the Lakers are too good. But what does Duncan do? He is in game one, 26 points, 21 rebounds, five assists, four blocks. It, But they lose. In game five, down 3-1. He has 34 points and 25 rebounds, but they lose. For the series, he averages 29, 17, and 5, but they lose in 5, which speaks to what a juggernaut the Lakers still were. Now 2003, his perfect season, okay? 2002, he had won he had won an MVP. He wins another one in 03, and it is truly his perfect season. So what does he do? 19, 16, and 5, round one average against Phoenix. Gets the Lakers in round two. Has 37 and 16 to end the series. Averages 28, 12, and 5 for the series. Round three, Western Arms Finals against Dirk. Starts the Western Arms Finals with 40, 15, and 7. Tied one game apiece, game three. Has 34 points, 24 rebounds, 6 assists, 6 blocks. 34, 24, 6, and 6 to go up 2 1. Averages for the series 28, 17, 6, and 3. And in the finals, a total annihilation of the Nets. Game one of the finals, this, some of these box scores are so bananas. Game one of the finals 32 points, 20 rebounds, 6 assists, 3 steals, 7 blocks. 32, 26, 3, and 7. A near quadruple double to end the finals. 21 points, 20 rebounds, 10 assists, 8 blocks. And and for for the finals average, 24 points, 17 rebounds, 5 assists, 5 blocks. Just absolutely bananas production to win his second finals MVP in his second ring. 2004, another round. They kept playing the Lakers in round two instead of the conference finals. Another round two battle with the Lakers. Uh, They lose after being up 2-0. Duncan averaged 21 and 12. Uh, and that's the, you know, the famous uh Derek Fisher games that that year, where Derek Fisher hits the 0.4 second shot after Duncan hits the crazy shot. But Duncan averaged 21 and 12, gave Shaq fits for the series. 2005, another angry playoff run for Duncan. 39 and 14 in round one against Mello and Denver to go up 3-1. 25 and 10 average in round two against Ray Allen. Against Nash and Amari in the Western Conference Finals, 27 and 14 for the series. To close them out, goes 31, 15, 4, and 3 in game five. Now he's back in the finals against the defending champion Pistons. Ben Wallace and Rasheed Wallace are their front line. 
He opens the finals with the 24 and 17, and then it goes seven in game seven, has 25 and 11, wins another finals MVP, averaging 20 and 14 against a great defensive team and a team that was this close to winning back-to-back titles in the 05 Pistons. 2006, see, this is where you remember, like, man, if, if not for the Derek Fisher shot, does Duncan win the ring that year in 04? And then in 06, what happens? He has an all-time duel with Dirk in round two, averaged 32 and 12 for the series, down 3-1, has 36 and 12, and then in game seven, has 41, 15, and six in an overtime loss. The what if there is, that's the game where the Mavs are down three, Dirk's driving to the basket, Manu slaps him on the elbow, Dirk gets the end one, they end up winning in overtime. They then go on to lose to the Miami Heat in the finals. But that's another, gosh, would the Spurs have won that title? But 07, the angry Duncan years, the years he didn't, coming off when he didn't win the title, look out. Another ring, this time he sweeps 22-year-old LeBron. Biggest challenge was again in round two rather than the Western Conference Finals. It was against Phoenix. He goes for 27 points, 14 rebounds, four blocks per game, including a 33-19 and game. In the finals, he averaged 18-12. and They gave Tony Parker the finals MVP. I didn't really agree with it then. I don't agree with it now, but fine, it's whatever. And then it looks like maybe... We're getting to the end. 08, he opens his title offense with a 40, 15, and 5 against Phoenix. Averages 25 and 15 for the series. They lose, though, to the Lakers in the Western Conference Finals, despite the fact that in game one, he has a 30 point, 18 rebound, two assists, two steal, four block game. And for the, in the final game of the Western Conference Finals, has triple double 19 points, 15 rebounds, 10 assists, but they lose. And then 2009, 2010, 2011. He only wins one series. His averages drop to 17 and 10. And it's like, oh, okay. All right, so the Spurs, you know, they won their four titles in eight years. It's unbelievable, but they're done. 2012, though, it's like, wait, are the Spurs going to win the title? They open the playoffs with 10 straight victories. But then if you remember, they're up 2-0 on OKC. Then it all clicks for OKC. OKC wins four straight. 2013, the Spurs are back in the finals. We are now 15 years removed from their first championship. In the Ray Allen game, he has 30 points and 17 rebounds. In the game to win the title, he has 30 points and 17 rebounds, including 25 in the first half, but they lose the most heartbreaking championship game ever. In game seven, they lose. Duncan misses that little bunny that could have tied the game, but he did put up 24 and 12. So how do they respond? They win the damn title the next year. 2014, he averages 18 and 11 against Durant and OKC to win the Western Conference Finals at age 37. To win the finals, uh, to win the Western Conference Finals in six games, he averages 18 and 11. 21 and 10 to open the finals, averaged 15 and 10. And that year, he could have won finals MVP. Again, they give it to Kawhi. And then 2015, he's 38 years old. They're playing a game seven against the Clippers. That's the Chris Paul falling down bank in game. He has 27 and 11. At 38 years old, at 37 years old, he he averaged 18 and 11 to beat Durant. At 36 years old, he has a 30 and 17 to win the title and Ray Allen beats him. He's sixth all-time in playoff minutes, or second all-time in playoff minutes, pardon me. Sixth all-time in playoff points, first all-time in playoff blocks, Third all-time in playoff rebounds behind only Wilton Russell. He has 103 career, 20 and 10 playoff games, which is the fourth most all-time. He's the fifth best player of the last 50 years. He is Tim Duncan. We have a Tim Duncan caller. Let's squeeze her in. Tim Duncan at five. Finally. Finally. I have I have nothing negative to say. Um, he's getting the respect that he deserves. He has five rings in three different decades which ps makes him sound like he's 100 but he's not it just timed out perfectly where that's how it worked out anyways that's it two-time mvp and ps also let other members of the team shine so yes tim duncan top five i mean probably could be higher but five is fine so listen five is fine and appreciate ms Beatles' help there he couldn't be higher i have the you guys know the four names ahead of him there is no real argument to put him ahead of any of those four 
But I also don't think there's any argument to put him behind Kobe or Shaq or Dream or Bird. I, I think Duncan is solidly where he is, the fifth best player of the last 50 years. Guy won 50 games every year, was one of the, in my opinion, the second best defensive player on this entire list behind only Akeem. The consummate pro, the consummate teammate, the consummate winner, Tim Duncan. We will now get to a player who truly did have GOAT potential. We saw his career cut a little bit short. You know who he is. We'll discuss him next. What's right? Welcome back in as we continue our countdown of the 50 greatest players of the last 50 years. And now a player that I truly regret that I was not able to enjoy his prime by watching it live. I was alive for a lot of his prime, but I was too young to remember it. But when you go back and watch these games, playoffs or regular season, he is just playing the sport differently than anyone ever had up to that point. And honestly, than anyone ever has since. Another thing to remember about this man is, while we go through this, keep in mind, he essentially played 12 years. He had 12 healthy seasons, and then the career cut short. He is the fourth greatest player of the last 50 years. He is, of course, number four, Magic Johnson. So, again, 12 years playing. Nine-time first-team All-NBA, one-time second-team All-NBA. He is a three-time MVP with nine top three MVP finishes. 75% of his seasons, he finished in the top three in MVP voting. He retired as the NBA's all-time assist leader. He's now sixth. He's a four-time assist champion. He averaged for his career 11 assists per game, and he has 138 career triple-doubles. So that's the top line regular season resume stuff. The playoff stuff, I, it, it is honestly, it, I am, just believe me when I tell you, I left a lot out because there is so much here. So he's a five-time champion, a three-time finals MVP, and a nine-time finalist. So again, nine of his 12 years, he was top three in the MVP voting. Nine of his 12 years, he got his team to the NBA Finals. It, it just, it's just unbelievable that he had 12 seasons before the, MB, before the HIV uh, diagnosis, and he had nine top three MVPs, nine finals, five rings, three MVPs. Still, still the all-time playoff leader in assists. Retired as the all-time playoff leader in steals. He's now fourth. He's the all-time playoff leader in triple doubles with 30. LeBron might catch him. LeBron's at 28. But when he retired, the second most playoff triple doubles ever was Bird with 10. He had 30. He is the all-time finals leader in assists and steals. His career average is 20 and 11. His career playoff average is 20 and 12. Only Kareem and LeBron in the last 50 years have played more finals games. Only Jordan, Kareem, and LeBron in the last 50 years have scored more points in the finals. So how'd he do it? Well, he did it by instantly kicking ass. So again, trust me when I say I had to gloss over some of this or else this would have been 45 minutes on Magic alone. But we'll start with 1980. His first two playoff games. He's a rookie. He's a kid too because he, he was young when he came into the league on like Bird. First two playoff games, 13, 12, and 16, followed by 25, 13, 11, and 6. His first series ever, he averaged a triple-double, 15, 11, and 11. And keep in mind with Magic that the we're going to say is points, and sometimes points, rebounds, assists, sometimes just points and assists. You hear a lot, a guy had 24 and 17. That typically means 24 points, 17 rebounds. With Magic, if we only give you two numbers, remember the second number is assists because these assist totals are so bananas. He closed out Seattle in the Western Conference Finals as a rookie with 20, 10, and 10. And then, of course, the the game that still might be the finest game of his career came as a rookie in the Finals 
No Kareem in game six because Kareem is hurt. He plays center and goes 42 points, 15 rebounds, seven assists, playing out of position to win the championship as the rookie, as a rookie. For the finals, playing against Dr. J in Philly, averaged 21 points, 11 rebounds, nine assists. For the playoffs that year, 18 points per game, 11 rebounds per game, nine assists per game, three steals per game. He's 20 years old. 1981. So that was 1980. 1981, loses in round one to Moses, a guy also very high on our list, despite averaging 17 points, 14 rebounds, seven assists. Now we're to 1982. Round one. They sweep the opposition. He has three round one triple doubles and averages 20, 12, and 11. Western Armand's finals sweeps the great George Gervin against Dr. J in the finals. Averages 16, 11, and 8 for another finals MVP. And for the playoffs, he's now 22 years old and a two-time champion and a two-time finals MVP. He averages for the playoffs 17 points, 11 rebounds, 9 assists, 3 steals. 1983 opens his title defense with 19 points, 9 rebounds, 18 assists, and 7 steals. 19, 9, 18, 7 in, to open the playoffs. Closes out round one with a 25 point, 7 rebound, 15 assist, 4 steal game. Playing George Gervin again. Game four of the Western Conference Finals. 31 points, 8 rebounds, 17 assists. Again, do you know how bad insane that is? Just throws up a humble 31, 8, and 17. For the series averaged 18, 11, and 14. And in, in the reason the points were low was game six of the Western Conference Finals. He had one of the most bizarre games ever. He scored two points, but had 15 rebounds and 16 assists. Now in the finals, they're playing Philly, who again, they beat in 1980, a Philly team that um, that beat them in 19, no, Moses beat them in 81, but who they beat in 1980 and who they also beat in 1982 in the finals. And this time Philly has Moses and Philly sweeps them. But Magic does average 19 points, eight rebounds, 13 assists. But if we're being fair, six turnovers per game. Still 19, eight and 13 for the series. 1984, round one sweep of the Kings. Averages 22, seven and 12. In round two against Dallas, averages 17, six and 13. Averaged in the Western Conference Finals, 18, six, 15 and three. Again, for Magic, I just have to tell you series averages because there's uh, uh, there's too many games. It's like, oh, he had 19 assists. He had 21 assists. He had 11. It's too much. Gets back to the finals, this time playing Bird and the Celtics for the first time, averages 18 points, 8 rebounds, 14 assists. But Bird was better than him in the series, and it's unbelievable. Magic in game four had 20 points, 11 rebounds, 17 assists but missed a couple free throws and had a bad turnover late. And that's the game where people came up with Tragic Johnson. Again, you think the media has only been hard now. The guy had 20, 11, and 17, was already a two-time champion and two-time finals MVP. And people were like, oh, Joker! 1985, right after the Tragic Johnson label gets thrown on him, opens the playoffs with an 18-point, 19-assist game. Closes out Drexler and Portland in round two, with 34, 9, and 19. 34, 9, and 19. Uh, in a series where he averaged 22, 7, and 17. Dude averaged 17 assists per game regularly in these playoffs. Gets revenge on Boston. Beats him in six in the finals. Magic has another just typical for the finals and for the playoffs. 18 points, 7 rebounds, 14 assists per game. It's his finals and playoffs averages. Guinea, 18, 7, and 14. Doesn't win finals MVP. Kareem wins it. 1986, defending champ, lose to Houston in the Western Conference Finals, and for the first time in four years, he does not make the finals. In that playoff run, where they lose in Houston, to Houston, Magic averaged 21 points per game, six rebounds per game, 15 assists per game. 
it, it, it's too many insane games to list them all. Again, he averaged 21, 6, and 15 for the postseason run. 1987, wins league MVP for the first time. And guess what? He's going to be back in the finals. Missed the finals for a year. Said that shit was whack. Let's go back to the finals. Run to the finals. The, Mad- the Lakers go 11 and 1. He averages on the way to the finals 28 and 12. And then in the finals, it's the rubber match with Boston. Game one, Magic Johnson, 29 points, 8 rebounds, 13 assists. Game two, Magic Johnson, 22 points, 5 rebounds, 20 assists. Game three, Magic Johnson, 32 points, 11 rebounds, 9 assists. For the series, 26 points per game, 8 rebounds per game, 13 assists per game, and another finals MVP. 1988, another year. So, yeah, it's probably time for Magic to make the finals again. This one, not quite as easy. Round two, game seven against Malone and Stockton. 23, 9, and 16. Against against Stockton, who's one of the best defensive point guards ever. 23, 9, and 16. Uh, That's round two goes seven. Round three goes seven against Dallas. In game seven, Magic. 24, 9, and 11. Another seven-game series in the finals. This should have been Magic's MVP. They gave it to Worthy because Worthy had the unbelievable game seven. But Magic in those finals averaged 21 points, six rebounds, 13 assists. Don't bring those finals up to Isaiah Thomas and the Pistons. They think that should have been theirs. Understand it. Still Magic. If the Lakers are going to win it, Magic's probably got to be finals MVP despite what Worthy did. 21, six, and 13. 1989. Magic wins another league MVP. They're going for three straight titles. They sweep their way to the finals. Matt, and this is one of the things that is forgotten about Magic's career. They're going for three straight titles. Magic is league MVP. They sweep the entire West en route to the finals. Magic averages 20 points, seven rebounds, 13 assists en route to the finals. In the finals, Detroit is awesome, but we also never know what will happen because Magic got hurt in game two, and they get swept. Magic misses games. He gets hurt in game two, so we don't know. I think Detroit probably wins. No matter what, but heart, it is, uh, it's hard to prove. Let me put it like that. In That ended an eight-year stretch of seven finals appearances and four titles. Overall in the 80s, he had eight finals appearances and five titles in that decade. 1990, Kareem is now retired. Magic wins another MVP, but they lose to Phoenix in round two despite, and this is what was amazing about Magic, All those games I told you, he's not scoring 40 in really any of them. Kareem retires. They're in the playoffs. They're facing adversity. Games four and five against Phoenix, 43 points in game four, 43 points in game five. Averages for the playoffs, 25, six, and 13. 1991. Oh, it's been a a year not being in the finals. Like we said, Magic didn't go multiple years without being in the finals. So 1991, he's back in the finals. Average 23, 8, and 13 in the playoffs leading up to the finals. In round one, he had a 20 assist game and a 38 point game in the same series. Round two, he had a 44 point game and averaged in round two a triple double 26, 10, and 13. This is 1991. This is his 12th year in the league. In the Western Conference finals, averages 21, 8, and 13 against Portland, who's the defending conference champs. They're facing MJ's Bulls. Game one is a triple-double, but then they lose three straight. Down 3-1, Magic did put up in game five, 16, 11, and 20 assists, playing all 48, but it's not enough. And then he's diagnosed with HIV. So again, nine years, first year, finals MVP champion. Second year, finals MVP champion. Sixth year, champion. Eighth year, league MVP. Ninth year league or 10th year league MVP with with three more titles mixed in in there. Year 12, back in the finals and could have won a couple years prior, but lost in the finals when he got hurt. And then he gets diagnosed with HIV and his career's over, but not actually. So he's out of basketball for four full seasons, comes back at age 36 after missing his age 32, 33, 34, and 35 seasons. In his first game back after four years out of basketball, 19, 8, and 10. 
He played the two-time defending champion Rockets in round one of the playoffs. An average for the series, 23, or average for the first two games of the series, I should say, 23, 10, and 4. He's 36 years old. He's been out of the league for four years. But then that's it, and the career's over. 143 career 10 assist playoff games. A two full seasons of double-digit assist playoff games. 10 career 20 assist playoff games. Little context there. The rest of NBA history combined has 10, 20 assist playoff games. Magic has 10. And the career was cut, I don't know, three, four, five years short. He's the fourth greatest player of the last 50 years. Magic Johnson. Let's go to a couple Magic callers. It's showtime. What up, man? I had to holler at you, Nick. It's Kelvin, man. And I heard you got Magic in the top five. Matter of fact, you got Magic in number four. You see he's smiling? I'm smiling because that's the right place for him, right? Transcended. Six foot nine. Running a point. Dropping dimes. Tupac said, how do you want it? You want rebounds, assists, points? It don't matter. He delivered five rings. Transcended on and off the court. The Magic, man. I did some research on Magic Johnson trying to find the most interesting thing possible. Here's what I came up with. Isaiah Thomas on open court a few years ago. I'll read you the quote. In this era, we would be talking about Magic Johnson as probably one of the greatest centers to ever play the game. Hmm, food for thought. I liked it. What do you think? I agree. I think Magic is truly positionless, could dominate at any spot, and in this era where you don't have to defend dominant centers, could be the ultimate small ball cheat code. I. The only question about Magic is, if not for HIV, would he be considered the GOAT? If he would have kept playing, keep in mind, he has five rings. Is it likely he would have gotten one more? I think so. If he gets one more, is it one of the years Jordan won? And would Jordan now have five? And Magic have six? Kareem is in the GOAT conversation. Kareem has six, but Kareem won five of his alongside Magic. He is, we, I, I can't call him underrated, but it is, uh, uh, you know, a little uh, frustrating to me when I heard people arguing, is Steph the greatest point guard ever? No. The conversation of greatest point guard ever starts at number two because Magic Johnson transcended the rankings. He is without question the greatest point guard of all time. He is the fourth greatest player of the last 50 years. And if we did all time, would he still be the fourth greatest player? Would, he still, would, he, would I have him ahead of Wilton Russell? I would. He's the fourth greatest player of the last 50 years. Also the fourth greatest player ever. Irvin Magic Johnson. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back in. 50 greatest players of the last 50 years. And next week, we get into our top three. And for the final three, they each have standalone episodes. And I want to reveal something here. I originally made this list three years ago. And obviously, there have been some major changes since then. Three years ago, Giannis wasn't on it. Now he's in the top 20. Three years ago, different guys, active players had to move up. And by the way, I had a few guys on it that haven't played in years and years they got kicked off for example pistol pete was on my initial list and then i really dug into it and i said he can't be on the initial list so there has been some movement the movement was pretty except for guys like Giannis, kd steph it, there wasn't a lot of movement uh amongst the very very best guys except for in the top three and I know everybody already thinks they know how this list is ending. And they think they have, you know, they have figured out how this thing's going to go one through five. What I will tell you is this. Six months ago, I had a different top three than I currently have. And it has to do with digging into the full depth and width of all of these guys' careers which is why I think, maybe I'm wrong, I think most of you will be surprised by who I have at number three, but everyone left, you know who they are, Kareem is left, Michael is left, LeBron is left, has an argument to be the greatest player ever. We will discuss each of them within the context of why they are or are not the greatest player ever as we give a full episode 
to each of our last three as we amazingly finish off our countdown of the 50 greatest players of the last 50 years with number three coming to you next week. Hey, thanks for watching. Smash or just lightly tap that subscribe button. It all works the same to get more from the show and make sure you click. Why don't you want to mash the bell too, guys? Or just, you know, lightly tap the bell to get notified every time new content drops. Check out full episodes of What's Right wherever you get your podcasts or just hit the link in the description below.